The UN Human Rights Office confirms remarks by UN uh, expert Agnes Calamart that she was threatened by the Saudis for her role in the Khashoggi investigation. Calamart said a colleague alerted her that a Saudi official had threatened to have her, quote, taken care of. The UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary and Arbitrary Killing says the officials in the room had considered the remarks as a death threat. In a report published in June 2019, Calamart said Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi's death constituted an extrajudicial killing for which Saudi Arabia is responsible. U.S. intelligence reports also concluded that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman approved and probably ordered the assassination of Khashoggi in the kingdom's Istanbul consulate in late 2018. Editor-in-Chief of the International Interests, Sami Hamdi, joins us now from the British capital, London, to offer us more insight on that story. Mr. Hamdi, welcome to the program. Uh, first of all, give us your perspective on uh, the, uh, the reports that have come out uh, that apparently Agnes Calamart received a death th threat from a uh, senior Saudi official. I think first and foremost it's important to state that I don't think Saudi Arabia would ever move against a UN official primarily because the repercussion would be so seismic and it would be absolutely impossible for the US or Europe to ignore it and not conduct uh, uh, punitive actions against Saudi Arabia which would essentially humiliate and really put Mohammed bin Salman into a difficult uh, situation. But I think more important what this report highlights is the extent to which the Saudis were panicking over the Khashoggi uh, issue, the way they were still panicking about it even in uh, 2020, the way they were, uh, Mohammed bin Salman himself was fearful and terrified uh, over his future uh, as a result of the Khashoggi murder and what the Biden administration uh, might be able to bring uh, uh, about. Uh, of course, the accusations when they were made, Trump seemed uh, still in power. It was unclear if Biden would win the elections and the Saudis therefore uh, were operating on the basis that Trump uh, had a very good chance of winning and therefore they would be able to continue their antagonism with the support uh, of uh, Donald Trump's uh, administration. But I think, of course, when we look at the situation today, Biden has let Mohammed bin Salman off the hook with the Khashoggi uh, affair, refused to sanction him, merely come out with a report that everybody, or the details of which everybody already knew, and the report did not add uh, anything uh, new. And I think in this context, uh, the, uh, the emphasis uh, of this report uh, is more about the extent to which the Saudis genuinely saw the Khashoggi issue as a threat to this, as a threat to Mohammed bin Salman uh, specifically, uh, despite what other people suggest that it wasn't uh, necessarily a top priority or top fear of Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, Mr. Hamdi, how are you seeing the uh, current administration's response towards uh, the Saudis? Uh, I'm not sure if you recall on the campaign trail. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, he said that uh, he would hold the Saudis accountable for uh, the Khashoggi death, and he also said, uh, I'm not uh, quite sure about the exact quote, but we will make the Saudis the pariahs that they are. Why, why the change in stance now? I think it's naive for anybody to ever believe a U.S. president who says that he will conduct his foreign policy based on human rights. I don't think the U.S. has ever allowed, for, allowed human rights to affect uh, its foreign policy aims. The U.S. has shown an amenability to work with dictators and authoritarian regimes very easily. It showed a willingness to ram through U.N. resolutions to illegally invade countries, whether that's Iraq or, or Afghanistan. The sense with which the U.S. is allowed to act with impunity is such that when uh, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia uh, was uh, uh, about to threaten uh, Washington over the killing of Mohammed Durdain uh, in the early 2000s, uh, when 9-11 took place, King Abdullah was so fearful that the U.S. would invade that he retreated and essentially uh, presented a Palestine-Israel plan to fend off the prospect of adding Saudi Arabia to the list of countries that the U.S. Uh, will invade. I don't think there's any difference between the Democrats or Republicans in the pursuit of their foreign policy in terms of what underpins the foreign policy. And I think when it comes to Saudi Arabia, Biden will have come to power uh, and uh, the realities would have hit, uh, will have hit him, or rather he's achieved his aim of becoming president and now... Uh, he wants to work with uh, allies or he wants to remind allies that America is back. He wants to work with them, whether it's against China or Russia or Iran uh, or the like. And I think these realities come at, uh, to a point whereby Biden sits and he says it's not really worth punishing Mohammed bin Salman when he is uh, socially engineering Saudi society to remove Islamic influences. He's bringing concerts like Drake and Mariah Carey and he invited Nicki Minaj. He's establishing Halal Disco. He's opening up tourism. 
he's really reeling back the hijab he's really pushing through uh, these uh, these emblems or symbols that we would like to see and i think uh, in this regard when biden calculates the pros and cons uh, he believes that muhammad bin salman has far more pros uh, than there are cons however to satisfy the american public of course and give the semblance that he's interested in uh, pursuing a foreign policy based on human rights he released a report that in reality means nothing he came out and said bin salman was uh, culpable for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, which everybody knew and didn't need a CIA report to come out with this at all. And that's why Donald Trump came out and, and made a, a sarcastic comment that Biden essentially took the same position as Donald Trump. Do nothing and let the relations continue. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Sami Hamdi, joining us from the British capital, London.